Why is this smartphone worth $1,600? Is it because of the true 4K OLED display that's now 50% brighter, or the dual front-facing speakers that have way more bass, or how about the new camera system that shoots 4K 120 frames per second video on all the lenses, or for the first time ever, a true optical zoom camera, or maybe all of the creative focused software built in, or possibly just this headphone jack that is now really hard to come by. Well, today we are gonna put the Sony Xperia 1 4 to the test against the iPhone 13 Pro to see how it stacks up at $1,600 compared to $999. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, why are you not comparing it to the 13 Pro Max? Well, I have to say that the comfort of this phone in the size compares way more to the iPhone 13 Pro. Putting them face to face, the Sony is actually slightly slimmer than the iPhone, even though you get much more screen space, at least vertically. And not only that, even though this is a larger phone, uh, as far as the weight, the Sony is about 10% lighter than the iPhone. Both of them do have this kind of square edge design, but the Sony has this little bevel all around, so you get actually the benefits of having that nice grip from that flat edge, but also a little bit more comfort than the iPhone. I have to say, this Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV is one of the most comfortable phones to hold in the hand. I also like how clean the Sony looks on the back. We have just the Sony and then the Xperia logo. We don't have a bunch of text and serial numbers, just like the iPhone looks nice. We also have that little NFC logo because Sony does use that, especially on their uh, cameras. It makes it easy to connect. And as far as the sides, on this left-hand side, we have no buttons at all, like we do on our iPhone. Flipping over to the other side, we have our volume rocker at the top, and then below that, we have a recessed power button that is also a fingerprint scanner, and then even lower, we have a dedicated shutter button when you're using this phone as a camera, which is quite nice. Now, at the bottom, we have USB Type-C instead of Lightning, and we also have this little slot, which is really cool that doesn't really need a little pin remover tool. You can actually just get your fingerprint underneath, pull it out, and this not only gives you access to your SIM, it also gives you a micro SD card, which actually goes up to one terabyte in space. So Sony definitely wants you to shoot a ton of photos and video on this phone. And with that, this phone actually comes with 512 gigabytes of storage built in internally. And we also get 12 gigabytes of RAM compared to six on the iPhone. So now we're starting to see why it's priced so high. Comparing the front of the phones, there's a different setup. The Sony doesn't have that notch sticking out, but it has that big forehead and chin like a traditional phone with ultra slim bezels compared to the iPhone that has thicker ones, but they're even all around. Now, Sony sticks with this setup even now because they care about their speakers as dual front facing stereo speakers. So with that said, let's go ahead and see if that trade-off was worth it. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Honestly, I was surprised when I heard the difference. The Sony has those dual front facing speakers. They say it's a big improvement, but the iPhone, even the smaller one that's quieter, the regular Pro sounds a lot better. I mean, listen to this. And then, oh, not only is it louder on the iPhone, it has much deeper bass. And yes, I did go through all the settings I enabled Dolby, I found the best mix of options, and it still doesn't really compete with the iPhone. Now with that, I also have to give props to the headphone jack. Not only does it have one and the iPhone doesn't, it actually plays back HD audio with a bunch of different codecs that are supported. And if you guys didn't know, there are still people out there that are buying brand new Walkmans. This one, for example, is 350 bucks with great reviews just for the sake of being able to play HD audio 
for high quality listening. They actually have some that go up to $3,200. So if you're an audiophile, you're in that creative music space, that feature really stands out. And now let's compare the displays. First off, we have that form factor difference. The Sony is a 21 by nine ultra wide display and holding it up when portrait, you guys can see that there's actually more things visible on the screen. Now the formatting is a little bit different. So I actually see more width, even though the phone is slightly slimmer and I see extra content on the bottom. Now both of these phones do support 120 Hertz for ultra smoothness and as far as detail, the iPhone is 460 PPI, nice and sharp, but the Sony is 643, I believe. That is 40% more pixels on the Sony, but can you tell a difference even about a photo away looking pretty closely to the phone? Honestly, I cannot. Text is super sharp and clear on both phones. Now, how about for video? This phone has that 21 by nine aspect ratio is perfect for watching 4K video with no bars. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. Taking a look at this 4K HDR Spider-Man clip, we see one that the full screen is filled up on the Sony because the aspect ratio matches most movies where the iPhone, it's not filled up. Of course, we can go ahead and zoom in. Then we still have some bars at the top and then we have our notch cutting into the video as well. Now, apart from that, both are streaming 4K, even though the iPhone can't doesn't have a 4K screen, you can still over sample. And what I've noticed so far watching is that the performance of the OLED screen, the Sony, the highlights actually pop a little bit more than the iPhone does, which is actually great because the iPhone is really, really good at HDR playback. Sony is really proud of their processing engine and software with this phone. They say that it's similar to the algorithms on their high-end TVs, and that makes the video look good. And I would say it actually does look good, has a little bit more contrast in its profile, highlights really pop, slightly more saturation. And overall, if you are gonna be watching a lot of videos or movies specifically on your phone, it does do a really good job. Now that is interesting because the actual brightness of the screens have a much bigger difference. So here I have the Sony maxed out completely. We have a normal page right here. And then if I go and I adjust the iPhone, you see how much brighter it is. We'll adjust that camera angle so you guys could see that difference. And the iPhone is at roughly 1200 nits compared to about 800 on the Sony. So that 50% brighter still doesn't mean that it matches up for outdoor brightness or even indoors if you wanna max it out. So that just makes me suspect that Sony is limiting the total brightness probably because of battery life because it has a 4K screen, super high resolution, plus super brightness means lots of battery drain. Now it does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery to help out, but that still isn't a ton considering everything else that's built in in that screen. Now before we jump into to performance, I wanna give a shout out to the cameras. We are gonna dive in detail tomorrow with a blind camera comparison, checking out if these new sensors, new lenses can actually compete with the iPhone and their software they've built up. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you wanna see a very fun, entertaining video with Vadim and Angelica and myself and just have a lot of fun with us and seeing the difference in them. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the performance. The first test I'm running is Speedometer 2.0, which is gonna test the responsiveness of the phone. Now, this Sony has the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, the best of the best. And the iPhone has, of course, the A15. Now, unfortunately, some of the applications that we normally benchmark with hands-on, they won't let me install it because this phone is pre-release and they don't want that leaking online. But we do know that this phone has good cooling, just like the Samsung S22 Ultra, and the performance is gonna be very similar. And look at that, we have 324 compared to 107. Now, of course, that's because of the single core performance. Apple is way ahead. Also software, we have Safari versus Chrome. That's the default browser here. And then all the other UI layers and other things in the back 
background that kind of slow it down. And I have noticed that the iPhone is way snappier in regular use. Now, as far as Geekbench 5, the A15 is 38% faster than the new Snapdragon, both in single core and in multi-core. Now that isn't even a one generation gap. In fact, the iPhone 11 is actually faster than in single core and almost as fast in multi-core compared to this latest chip that recently came out. So as far as CPU performance and even software, the iPhone is definitely ahead. Now with graphics, the difference is about 18% in 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme test. So Apple's chip and Qualcomm Snapdragon in the Sony phone, they've gotten a lot better in graphics this year and they are much closer there. Now with that said, the iPhone does dim. It has a lot of heating issues if you're playing high resolution for a while, whereas the Sony has better thermal management. So if you're playing for a while, that difference can actually kind of get closed. And that leads me to software because Sony has done so many improvements and optimizations and created software like Game Enhancer where it will give you so many different options. For example, you can live stream to YouTube with your phone just with it and not only will you actually stream, it can record, it can show comments and with that, they give you a ton of settings. For example, you can change your game mode if you want to you know, get better battery life. Uh, you can actually go in and change your display settings. So for microphone, you can equalize the audio. So if you want, say, footsteps to stand out more and you want to lower the high-end frequencies for competitive gaming, you could do that. You can go to image quality and you can literally raise the shadows if you want to see better in dark conditions that will improve your gameplay. There's just so much more things you could do. It's just really, really uh, nice for people that are serious about their games. Now, that is only the beginning. We have our Video Pro app. Let me go ahead and allow all of this here. Um, that really gives you so many options if you care about getting the best video. You have all of your information alongside the bottom that you can manually change. You have your levels, you can zoom, you can manually focus. You get object tracking, white balance. You can just change so many different things. Your aspect ratio, you can shoot in 21 by nine. It is crazy what Sony gives you. It's just like an actual real camera. Of course, for photo, we also have a ton of options on the photo side. And of course, we talked about their live streaming setup. Not only can you live stream from any of the cameras without any extra apps directly to YouTube or other platforms, you can have a little vlogging setup and you'll have a screen on the back if you wanna record and see yourself with the back camera or you can plug a camera with a USB-C cable for those that are supported or through a card directly into the actual phone and you'll live stream without any computer or laptop to wherever you want with a slim package. And that is just crazy for people that do professional video. Not only that, when I was shooting a ton of video commercial stuff, I wanted to have a slim, high quality display to use as an external monitor. Most on the market was 720p or 1080p, poor battery life, really huge and thick and heavy. So you can use this as a companion to your camera with a true 4K display to be able to use as a monitor outside and that just provides you so much value. Um, now with all of that said, there's so much packed into this and we're gonna take a look at the cameras tomorrow in the blind camera comparison to see if it's truly as good as Sony says. Um, not everybody really needs that. So Sony knows and they actually are saying, hey, this is marketed for creatives. Those that care about entertainment, gaming, live streaming, video and photography, that is who they're marketing it to, all the creative kind of people that are willing to spend more money. Whereas the iPhone is marketed to everybody. It's an all around phone without all the special features for the music producers, things like that. So that's why I wanna hear your guys' opinion. Do you think this phone is worth it from what you've seen or would you just go with an iPhone? Do you not really care about all those extra features in the software? You guys let me know down below. Uh, 
uh, personally, I think if you can use some of those extra features, if you are gonna use the voice recording features, they have AI denoising, the gaming stuff, especially the streaming. If you have a camera that you wanna combine this phone with, it does provide a really good value with the amount of storage that is built in. Uh, so you guys let me know your thoughts. Click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe, help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers and you wanna see the comparison, check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.